And it is uh, now my honor to be able to bring up uh, our next panel. Um, this panel is going to describe the statewide efforts of state and counties to address the issue of psychotropic medication in foster care, both in terms of compiling the available data to better understand the problem, and also in terms of creating systems of care that better protect kids. Uh, for each panelist, uh, as a request, as you talk about the activities you're working on, I know that Senator Hancock and myself would like you to also comment on how these efforts are working to be able to protect youth across the state. Uh, just a few items. I also want to say uh, a hearty thank you to Karen DeSaw from uh, the Bay Area News Group, who is also here today for her amazing work. And I just wanted to call her out and tell her how much we appreciate uh, her continuing coverage on this important issue. Um, and then the other item is uh, we're grateful that uh, Director Lightborn, among uh, our other panelists, are here today. And I just want to note that Director Lightborn came to the state in 2011. Uh, and uh, Director Lightborn, in a separate conversation that I had with him, uh, is committed to be able to not only tackle this issue, but the continuing care. Uh, and his report was uh, recently released. And I know that we're going to be working with him throughout the year. Um, I'd like to be able to introduce our panel here very quickly and then, of course, turn it over to Will Lightborn, who is going to be, who is the Director of Department of Social Services. We're grateful that uh, Dr. Karen Baylor is here. She's Deputy Director of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services uh, with the Department of Healthcare Services. We're grateful that Diana Cocos Gonzalez is here. She's Chief Mental Health Services Division, Department of Healthcare Services. Uh, Frank Meka is here today, who's the Executive Director of County of the County Welfare Directors Association. Thank you so much. Along with Dr. Bill Arroyo, who is Medical Director uh, from Los Angeles County, and he's going to be speaking on behalf of the County Behavioral Health Directors Association. On behalf of our committee, we're grateful that you would take, uh, take time out of your busy schedules. And let's kick off our state and local oversight and response panel with Director Lightborn. And you have four minutes, sir, and uh, we'll have questions at the end. Thank you, um, Chair McGuire, Senator Hancock. Um, th th and Pete Chervinka from our department, he's the program services deputy, is passing out a, a slide deck that I'll refer to in a few moments. It's a report that we prepare for the Child Welfare Council, which is where we've been updating this issue on a regular basis. Um, th there was an op-ed in last week's, last Saturday's Mercury, which I think is, is very apt, and it sort of outlines the issue in front of us. A child's severe and sometimes delayed behavioral response to maltreatment requires more individualized assessment and treatment in the context of family and community care. There are some children who are and should be appropriately treated with drugs, but we should be thoughtfully determining which ones so should be under what controlled circumstances and not medicating girls and boys for behavioral controls. Um, in the slide deck that we presented, um, the first slide, simply for your uh, reference, is the, a description of the primary drugs we're talking about, uh, the um, anti, uh, psychotropics. Um, on slide number two, I, I want to focus on this for a moment, because although we're facing really very significant challenges, I also want to strike a note of optimism, because we're at a point where initiatives are aligning and are supporting where we're trying to get to. Um, the work in this area is multifaceted. Um, Considering the appropriate treatments is not done in isolation, but it's done in the context of social work practice and inclusive planning. To that end, as described in the very good staff report, um, we, for which we're grateful, um, California is now implementing a core practice model for child welfare. This calls for robust, trauma-informed, accurate assessment of a child's needs and strengths, an assessment that's informed by the participation of the child, the family, relevant professionals and caregivers. These assessments by child and family teams are the starting place for the continuum of care reform, which as the chair mentioned, was released with the governor's budget on January 9th, um, and is the administration's proposal for restructuring the system of care. The 
way in which we're going to address this issue is not by creating checklists or um, boxes. It's going to be by fundamentally restructuring the way child welfare is practiced and where children are cared for. The goal, of course, is to have children only in congregate care for treatment purposes in short-term residential treatment centers, time limited, specific case plans designed to step them down with services following them to caregivers in the community, um, preferably relatives or foster parents who then receive the services that they need to meet the needs of the child in a setting where all of those qualities that Ms. Gonzalez and Ms. Hoffman were describing on the earlier panel. This is now largely possible because of the uh, key components that are being uh, implemented across the state at this point through the home and community-based services aspects of what's referred to as the KDA court suit settlement. And these strategies then in turn using um, what we think of as wraparound services, but on a broader scale, um, intensive care coordination, and then therapeutic foster care, which we expect to be launched very shortly. Um, these then will sit on the specific initiatives of the quality improvement uh, project, which was mentioned before. The quality improvement project being the specific effort to address issues of medication and the utilization of alternative services. Um, if we turn to slide three, um, clearly there are a lot of parties who share in a process that we need to, to strengthen. Um, we have caregivers, um, social workers, who teachers who observe needs, apparent needs of children. They in turn refer them to professionals. The professionals are assessing and to some extent diagnosing. The goal at that stage is to emphasize non-medical treatments wherever possible. Thereafter, if medication is required, the roles then of the court, of the children's attorneys, um, and of second opinions become crucial. Ultimately, what must be done is monitoring very, very closely and very, very carefully the effects of any medication that is provided. As uh, Ms. Rodriguez mentioned, um, clearly there is a huge overlap between issues of group congregate shift care and uh, the prescrip uh, prescription of medication and the a, a major part of the continuum of care reform is evaluation of those short-term treatment resource centers that continue into the future and the foster family agencies and treatment agencies that are providing services across the, the system of care. Um, the goals of the Quality Improvement Project are described on slide six and seven. Um, fundamentally, to decrease the use of psychotropics, increase the use of psychosocial supports, and assure that the child's safety is always at the front of that. The deliverables of the Quality Improvement Project are the following. A Foster Youth Mental Health Bill of Rights, which is final now and is being distributed. Questions that youth should ask of doctors, social workers, and judges to become more informed and active participants. That is complete. Prescribing guidelines for doctors, which we expect um, to be finalized in March. Um, prescribing guidelines and authorization guidelines for judges, which has been referred to the Judicial Council's March meeting. And the development of data agreements and report formats for monitoring and oversight between state agencies and county child welfare agencies, which are in finalization of um, exact dimensions regarding data safeguarding, et cetera. Um, our final um, uh, slide really speaks to our vision. It's what we want to achieve, which is only having medications used when all other systems have been used. Um, or, there, or a very strong assessment diagnosis indicates it. Um, how we are working to get there through the continuum of care, the KDA implementation, and the quality improvement project, and how we will know when we get there, how we've been successful. It will be a long road. 
Um, the continuum of care reform itself, we expect to be a multi-year implementation. We can't simply wish away or close abruptly the congregate care resources until the family-based care resources and the foster family home resources are created, strengthened, and as Ms. Rodriguez indicated in the context of the parenting initiative that we co-sponsor with CWDA and Youth Law Center, um, we, we have strengthened that sort of fabric of um, foster family caregivers as well as relative caregivers. Um, and finally, data, 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 training, training, training. Thank you. Mr. Lightborn, thank you so much. Um, in, uh, as I stated, what we'll do is uh, wait for questions if that works uh, towards the end of the panel. Uh, let's turn it over to Ms. Baylor. She's Deputy Director of the Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services with the Department of Healthcare Services. Uh, Ms. Baylor, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman uh, McGuire and <coughs> Senator Hancock for this opportunity. We also share your concerns regarding this vulnerable population, and we have been working on a number of fronts, which I'm going to talk about. Um, first of all, we're working on the data and working with interested stakeholders, and I know that can be frustrating at times, but I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, we are working closely with DSS, uh, CWDA, and CBHDA more than we ever have before. Uh, we're working with counties, the providers, and pharmacists to make sure that they know the clinical and programmatic requirements. And then we also are supporting a number of different reforms uh, in the foster youth delivery system. But let's jump in and talk about the data. Um, we are governed, DHCS is governed by HIPAA. We are a covered entity, and that puts restrictions and certain requirements on the data that we can release for uh, reporting to the public. Uh, we are responsible for uh, making sure that these requirements are met for any of, uh, data sharing for confidential data and to make sure that the data is de-identified. Not all of the programs that are under the uh, California Health and Human Services are HIPAA required entities, but we are. Uh, and so in order to maintain a balance between trying to be transparent and providing data, but at the same time trying to protect the information, uh, we did develop a set of guidelines, which is the public aggregate reporting for DHCS business reports, and I believe that was mentioned in your background information as well. Uh, these guidelines were developed in 2014, and they have been in place uh, since August of 2014, and all of the requests that we receive for data have to go through this guideline process. Um, and then we also have to make sure that the data we release is not um, combined with other public data in, in order to identify uh, who these people are. And so we're very protective of that. Um, we do receive a lot of requests for data. Uh, we have a very large uh, data system with lots of different data components. but. It, and, and people try to reconcile data reports, but you have to keep in mind that there's <laughs> parameters around each of the requests, and they're not the same parameters. So for example, someone may ask us for data for foster youth, but they define foster youth as age up to 21. Others are wanting to look at foster youth just to age 18. Some want managed care plans included in the data, some don't. And so you get a variety of parameters uh, regarding the data that we pull, and so that's why you cannot reconcile one report to another. Um, we did recently implement a revised TAR process uh, in October of uh, 2014, and the TAR is the Treatment Authorization Request. And that is for any uh, antipsychotic for 0 to 17 have to go through the TAR process. Um, we've also done a frequently asked questions document that is a living and breathing document that is posted to the website. And so we update it when any more changes or, or questions come our way. Um, we are willing to provide information and to make sure that uh, we meet the requests that you have for your policy uh, objectives. We have been meeting with the National Center for Youth Law monthly since October in order to refine their requests and get the data that they are they're requesting, and I know it takes time, but these are large data systems and it does take time to really get the queries 
exactly to where you want them so that it answers the question that you want. And sometimes we ask very, very broad questions, and that needs to be refined in order to, to match up with what data we have available and to give you the answer that you're looking for. Um, some of the other efforts that we've done is um, we, as Will mentioned, uh, we are working on the interagency agreement so that it covers um, all data necessary to, for the foster care children, and then we're working closely with counties to make sure that that, that is included in this interagency agreement. Um, EPSDT, Specialty Mental Health Services, as you know, is an entitlement program. Uh, it is administered locally by the counties, but it is the responsibility of the Department of Health Care Services to oversee the program. We have sent out numerous information notices and um, all plan letters to the counties, to the, mental, the managed care plans, excuse me, uh, to make sure that they know their responsibility in providing uh, specialty mental health services. Uh, Director Lightborn also mentioned the quality improvement project that we've been working on together and in developing guidelines. Uh, these guidelines are in final review, but they're, they are posted on our website in draft form uh, to give social workers and providers and, and judges and caregivers uh, more specific information regarding the use of psychotropic medications. We're also willing to work with the uh, Judicial Council in providing training and education um, because that's where the JV-220s go and that's the last sign-off uh, for authorization to uh, administer the medications. Um, we are supporting of many of the reforms that are happening. We're very supportive with um, DSS uh, in moving toward a continuum of care reform. We've worked very hard together on the implementation of the KDA, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dina Cocos Gonzalez to give an update on our KDA efforts. Thank you so much. Good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon, Chairperson McGuire and committee member Hancock. Um, the, the activities and services implemented, uh, implemented as a result of uh, the KDA settlement agreement are intended to transform the way California children and youth who are in foster care or who are, or are at eminent risk of foster care placement receive access to mental health services consistent with a core practice model that Director Lightborn spoke to earlier that creates a coherent and all-inclusive approach to the service planning and delivery. Implementation efforts for KDA activities are ongoing. As of January, 53 counties are providing intensive care coordination and intensive home-based services. There has been close and improved collaboration between the child welfare systems and the mental health systems, both at the state level between the Department of Social Services and the Department of Health Care Services, and then also at the county level between child welfare agencies and the county mental health plans, um, as well as with the associations, the county associations, and with the state departments. We are implementing a shared management structure to develop shared vision, policy and program direction, clear and consistent guidance and outcomes and accountability measures. Part of that includes establishing uh, formally an executive team, which we had our first meeting in January, and also establishing a community team. There is um, intense county outreach where the state departments together um, discuss implementation efforts with the counties, monitor progress, and provide technical assistance. KDA, the implementation activities and the results of that settlement have really put a solid foundation and structure in place for the systems that serve uh, children and youth in foster care that can just be built upon for the other initiatives as we, as we work on issues um, related to foster care. 